Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm Patrice and today we will be working with our brother embroidery and sewing machine and making this hair bonnet. All right y'all, so before we jump into making this hair bonnet, I do wanna thank all of you for watching this video. If this is your first time here, please be sure to click that red subscribe button. Also, we have a Facebook group called Craftable Things and you can find us on TikTok and Instagram. Our Facebook group is amazing and everyone in there is super supportive and helpful. So if you are a beginning crafter or you are a pro crafter, definitely check us out, All right? So that's about it. We are about to make us a hair bonnet, y'all. All right, y'all, so here's everything that we will be using for this project. We have two pieces of fabric here. These are both satin fabric, which is polyester. So we will be able to do sublimation onto these. And you don't need two different fabrics. You can use one. We are going to be making a reversible bonnet so that way you can flip it in and out. Also, I always like to have my rotary cutter with me. We have fabric scissors. You don't want to use any other type of scissors, scissors that you have been cutting paper to cut your fabric. So make sure you have fabric scissors that are dedicated solely to cutting fabric. We have this elastic and today I will be using three eighths of an inch of elastic. You can use one fourth, you can use, it's, it's up to you, but I like thinner pieces of, of elastic to go into the bonnets, not too thick. And we also have some straight pins to help us kind of map out our area. We might also use some chalk to do that as well. It just depends. So you can use either the chalk or the straight pins, but both get the job done. And we will also be using the safety pin to help us get that elastic through. So we are first going to start by working with the fabric and I am just unfolding the fabric so that I can get ready to cut it. I will be cutting this into a 30 by 30 square. Both of the fabrics need to be cut in the same size and I'm just going to be using my cutting mat but you can use a measuring tape to measure your fabric. I'm using my cutting mat because my table is not that large and I need to be able to fold these pieces to get an even an even square. All right, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just showing the process here um, of how I get that done by folding the fabric and making sure that it unravels the way that I want it to unravel. I am going to be using my rotary blade just to cut this out and very simple and seamless. Make sure if you are using a rotary blade that you are being safe and following all safety precautions when using that rotary blade. All right, so we are all done with cutting this square out and I am going to keep it folded. I wanna fold it back exactly the way that I just had it folded and so that means you're gonna fold it in half lengthwise and then in half widthwise. All right, and so now it is ready for us to start cutting our circle out. And so you wanna make sure you start cutting in the correct area. That part, the corner part where it is, there's no openings, you want that closest to you, all right? So I am just going to take my measuring tape and measure a 13 inch radius, or at least a 13 inch line because right now this is still a square, and I am going to take my measuring tape and I'm going to also get a piece of chalk and my pens. You need your pens handy just in case your material is kind of slippery or you're not really good with it to pen it down. But I am going to take that measuring tape and just go around it and keep marking 13 inches. So keep the tip of your measuring tape right there in the corner so that all you have to do is keep moving it up and you will mark it with your chalk.
Once you're done with that, it is now time to cut it out. And once you cut it out, leave it folded because you want to do the same exact thing to the white fabric. And if you keep it folded, this is an easier way of not having to re-chalk it. All right, so now we are ready to open up our circles and voila, we have two circles that we are going to start with to make our bonnet. And you wanna make sure that the satin sides are facing each other. So the shiny sides need to be facing each other because we are going to sew and leave an opening to flip it inside out. All right, so you want to make sure that the shiny sides are facing each other. I cannot say that enough. Um, and that way you will, it's the correct way y'all. So just do it that way. All right, so we are going to get ready and chalk this, but what I need to do is I wanna flip it over to the blue side because we are not going to be able to see this white chalk on the white fabric. All right, but they do have different color chalks that you could use, but because I have white right here with me, we are going to chalk it on the blue side. So just make sure that it's matched up. You can go ahead and pin it a little so that it doesn't move while you're chalking. But right now I am just mapping out an area that I want to leave open. Okay, so once I map out that area so that I don't sew in that area, I am just going to measure about a quarter of an inch of that edge and I am then going to draw a line using the white chalk around the edge of the circle so that I can have a guide to sewing together these two pieces. All right, so I like to do a quarter of an inch. Um, you could do smaller or larger, but a quarter of an inch works really good for me, especially once we flip it inside out and we get ready to do the other stitching. All right, so you're just gonna do this all the way around the circle. I am pinning it as I go, so that way it makes it a lot easier when I get ready to put it underneath the sewing machine. All right, so just keep doing that, and once I'm done doing that, we will move to the next step. All right, so I'm all done outlining that, and as you see, I made sure that I kept that opening very clear so that when I get ready to sew. And today we will be using my Brother SC600, which is an embroidery and sewing machine. And we are just going to be using a straight stitch to stitch around this material. And now I'm ready to begin stitching. And you want to make sure that as you're stitching that you remove those pins and that your needle is not hitting the pins that you placed inside of your fabric. All right, so we are going to get ready to start. I am just placing, doing a needle placement just to make sure that it is where I want it to be. And I am going to begin by checking my speed. And I don't want it too fast because I'm still fairly new with sewing. So it's kind of like at a medium speed and I am going to stitch forward first on the, the fabric, and then once I go a few stitches, I want to back stitch, and that seals that stitch so that it doesn't unravel and that it's nice and secure, okay? So you wanna do that about two times. So you wanna go forward, you wanna forward stitch, and then you wanna back stitch maybe about two or three times, and then go around the entire circle, okay? Okay, y'all, so now we're already done with going around the circle and we want to pause because we want to make sure that opening is there, okay? And so once you make sure you haven't sewed that opening, go ahead and do a few forward and back stitches in that area, okay? Do not sew your opening. Leave your opening open. <laughs> 
Okay, so we're all done with that part. And what I want to do is I have too much excess white fabric hanging over. So I just want to go ahead and cut that because I don't want that to get caught up when I get ready to sew the channel for the elastic band. And now that I'm done with trimming the edges of the fabric, I want to go ahead and turn this inside out. So you are going to use that opening to turn it inside out. And now you have the outer part of your bonnet, which is the part that will be seen. So you just want to make sure that you try to straighten it out as much as possible. And once you're done doing that, you want to apply some heat. So I'm going to be using my Cricut Mini Press to do that, but you can use a regular iron to just iron around those edges so that your edges are nice and flat. So I didn't realize that my measuring tape was upside down, sorry, but we are getting ready to outline the outer seam and that is going to be one and a quarter inch away from the edge of the hair bonnet. So we are going to go ahead and do the same process that we did before and we are going to use our chalk to just make sure that we have that area where the opening is you know nice and noticeable for us but we are then going to go around the full circle with one and a quarter inch from the edge and just go all the way around Alright, so we're all done with the outer circle and now we are going to do the inner circle and that inner circle is going to be closed. So the outer circle, we still need to have that opening, but the inner circle, we are going to go ahead and do a complete seam in a circle all the way around, alright? And so I am measuring that from the outer circle to the inner circle, that is going to be about a quarter inch. And so I want that quarter inch because I want a channel for the elastic to be able to go through. All right, so we are done with both or outlining both of those seams. And I just wanna make sure that you guys know that outer circle, we are not closing. The inner circle, we are going to close. So now we're back under the needle and we are going to follow the outline that we have. And don't forget to go ahead and do a little forward stitching and then do some back stitching just to make sure that the start of your stitching and when you get to the end is nice and secure. So I am just going to follow these outlines and once we're done, we will get ready to place the elastic inside. When you're doing the outside stitch or the outside line, make sure that you do not stitch your opening. You want to keep it open. Okay, so we're all done and this is a close-up view of what that looks like and that chalk comes right off so don't worry about that chalk but it looks good and our opening is perfectly accessible next I'm going to measure our on it just so that I can know exactly what it measures because I will be getting ready to print out an image to sub on top of it and for those of you who are new to sublimation or you're here only to see the bonnet being made sublimation is a process of transferring ink onto certain fabrics mostly polyester fabrics and this can only be accomplished by using a sublimation printer and sublimation ink and extremely high temperatures so I taped my image down with heat tape and I am going to place a piece of paper underneath because I don't want that ink to go through and also 
place the piece of paper on top because this paper does bleed. I will be using my Cricut Easy Press and we will press this for 45 seconds and we are all done. So let's see how that looks. But I do want you guys to note that that ink did come onto the paper so you definitely need some butcher paper or copy paper to place on top. But it looks pretty good already, I can already tell. And nope, it did not go through the back. So we can sub if you want you can sub on both sides that's up to you you can even do a full image on the entire bonnet that's up to you but right now i am loving the way that this came out that looks really really nice that ink transferred really really well to that fabric all right y'all so we are almost done and now we just need to measure our elastic and i am going to Cut this elastic in 24 inches. Do not stretch it out. Just leave it in its relaxed state to cut. And so 24 inches is the standard adult size elastic that we need for this particular headband. All right. And so here's our opening. And we are just going to get ready and place this throughout the headband as you all saw. I used a safety pin and clamped it onto the end of the elastic so that it's easier for me to feel and move through that channel that we created. Okay, there are several different tools that you could use for this. However, if this is your first time, you may not have many tools on hand. And so a safety pin is really, really simple and quick to grab and use. As you're threading the elastic through, make sure that you're holding on to the end or maybe put another safety pin on the other, on the opposite end so that you don't end up threading the elastic fully through. And once you are done threading, you can either tie it in a knot or you can stitch it together. Today we are going to stitch it together and this only takes a few seconds to stitch it together once you are done stitching it together then you will want to close up that opening finally finally we can close up that opening you have been working so hard not to close that opening up and now is the time and you can go ahead and close it up so all we're gonna do is make sure that that material is tucked in nicely so that it can look nice and neat and that you can't really tell that the opening was there. All right, so we're going to put both pieces together, fold them over, and then we are going to sew them together. As you're sewing, don't forget, when, when you start to sew, make sure you go forward and do your back stitch when you start and also when you finish sewing it together. And that's pretty much it y'all. So now I'm just snipping away some loose threads so that it can be nice and clean. And that's it. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely head over to Sewing and Crafting with Sharon where you can get so many other sewing tips. She also has a Facebook group so you definitely want to head over and check her out. But y'all look how easy this is. So nice. <gasps> All right, y'all, so we are all done with sewing this hair bonnet, and y'all, this came out great. This is so nice. I love it, and being able to customize and personalize the fabric is also an added bonus, so you definitely want to get lighter fabric if you intend on subbing onto it and kind of, you know, making it your own, or if you plan on selling these, that's an extra bonus of being able to personalize it and possibly put somebody's logo or name or whatever it is that you want to put on it all right y'all so that was it that was super quick and super easy and it is a great starter project for sewing i want to make sure that i give a shout out to sewing and crafting with sharon who first showed me how to make these quick and easy bonnets Thank you so very much. But if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like it. Also, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Before you leave, if you are not a subscriber to this channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you here with us. And also on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, come on over and join the Craftable Things family. 
But that's it for today, y'all. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time.